In today's unboxing, we take a look at the Tau Empire Start Collecting Set. Let's take a look. There are hobbyists among us, geniuses with the ability to play any game they want to. In 1978, a corporation known as The Interior isolated a young hobbyist named John and exploited his genius for their entertainment. Then one day, their hobbyist ran away. Here we have the Tau Empire's start collecting set for Warhammer 40k. It contains 23 miniatures. Uh, the Citadel Miniatures from the Games Workshop. Let's go ahead and flip it over so we can take a look at the other side. Here it's going to show you what is actually in the box. Uh, again, one of the things that I always really like about the uh, Games Workshop Citadel line of stuff is these little sections here. So especially if you are new into the hobby and you need to have an idea of what paints to get, these right here are a great head start where it is showing you some of the colors that they are using here. So if you want to try to replicate what they're showing, uh, these are them. Additionally, if you were, so if you were to get this, you can see what kind of colors. Then you can go onto their uh, YouTube page uh, where they do have a lot of tutorials for a lot of this stuff or through their app, which actually has a lot of stuff in it as well. Let's just go ahead and open this up and take a look see what we have inside all right so it looks like we have one two three four five six and then the HQ and then that HQ's instructions instructions for the other two armies and then of course all of the bases and then all those flight stands ah, see they're already wanting to fly away and get going all right let's take a closer look at all of these and then when we're done we will do a closer in-depth look at the instructions for everything well let's start here with the HQ it is their Eternal on Hover Drone. There we can see it. Again, we will look at that in a little closer in a little bit. But here he is. So there's that drone that he's going to be hovering on. Very cool. Next, we'll take a look at the Fire Warriors. Now, this set has three sprue in it. Now, they do look pretty similar, but they're actually uh, all different sprues. In fact, uh, out of all, what is that, six, seven sprues that is in this kit, every single one is different. Um, especially the ones here in the Crisis Battle Suits. Uh, they look like they're the same three sprues, but they're actually slightly different. Uh, we'll make sure we look at those and take a look at some of those differences. Um, but here are the Fire Warriors up first. Now let's go ahead and give a close-up view of all of these. And I know one of, for me, one of my favorite parts about looking through these new sets and when you first get them is actually going through the, uh, the rule book 
uh, and looking at all of the different options and all your different variants that you can do uh, to try to get an idea of what you might want to build or where you might want to try to magnetize. And just looking at these, I'm just seeing so many parts, so many little accessories, so much potential here uh, for customization. Absolutely loving this. And on to the next one. Because uh, I believe there's a 10 man. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, 10. But that is a lot more heads than 10 right there. So you can already see you are going to have some customization options with this set. I mean, look at all that. I mean, that's crazy. Of course. So that's just an insane number of ones, then some twos. And then a bunch of just little individuals. That's nuts. Awesome. Absolutely loving that. And then the third. So now this looks to be a weapons pack. And then those... Uh, the drones and the ground missile. Very cool. And here we'll take a look at the Crisis Battle Suits. Now one thing that I thought I would mention, uh, and it goes also with the Fire Warriors, uh, it can be, especially if you're new to figuring out which sprues go with which. Uh, like I said, there were three of them, but these ones were attached, so these are obviously go together. Same thing with the Fire Warriors, they had one that was already attached. And then the third, which was separate, so you did have to kind of figure out uh, you know, which one goes with which set, but it really wasn't too difficult. Um, but this right here is the extra, the, the, the bonus one. Um, and if I remember right, the one here with the cannons uh, was the, the third, the extra un, unattached uh, for the Fire Warriors. But here with the Crisis Battlesuit, here again is that, that third one. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. That's interesting, all those little who knows what's it's. Right here is where we kind of want to pay attention for here in a little bit when we kind of try to look a little closer and see what the differences are. All right. Here's the next. And again, it's this section right here we're going to pay a little closer attention to as we get into the differences between them. And then finally here, again, that little area.
All right, so now let's see if we can't quickly look at these. Because here, if we look, kind of have them all on camera. They look different left and right, maybe. But here, I mean, we can see a few little differences. A lot more than I thought. Here we go. So we can see some different guns. So yeah, there's a good bit of differences here. Uh, but like here... These are some of the ones that I noticed. Very similar parts all right around here. But then on this, we get some differences like right here, here, and then down there. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at all of the rules, the instruction manuals, everything that came with the sets. Uh, first off, we have the water decals right there. There we go. Now with these, uh, remember when you use these, you're going to want to cut out just the one you want. You know, with your exacto, with your hobby knife, cut out the, the one that you want. Put that in water, it'll loosen it up. Uh, and then you'll see the, the water transfer, the water decal actually be able to slide off. Uh, and then you'll be able to transfer it over onto your miniature. So that's how those work. And then we're going to go ahead and start with the Eternal. And he looks pretty simple. And then I have all of the sprue kind of here off camera so we can take a look easier if we need to yep and then see here we go that's i was wondering how that was work so it's a a fallen flag that's on the ground so it's this flag that is holding up right there maybe not oh there's the bottom so right there and that little notch right there so you, that's going to hold up the drone that he's standing on so that's kind of a fun way to do that um, now with this a lot of this is going to be over that so you might want to make sure that you do some of this in sections uh, you know where you paint this bit you know these separately uh, or in sub assemblies uh, so that way you can actually paint this if you're if you're doing stuff um, and then, of course, this banner would be a, a fallen banner from anything. So really, you could have this be anything. Uh, so if you had some of the other Star Collector sets or if you knew some people that have them uh, and you have some extra water decals from that, that'd be a ni maybe a nice place to, to apply some of those um, that you could put on. And then, of course, always remember that this is going to be the side down, so you don't need to put as much effort into the back side as maybe you will the top, which will hopefully be seen a little more. There's him. And then up next we have the Fire Warriors. Now I like this one a lot because it's the uh, newer colored manual. So here looks like we have some different options we can do. So that might we might be able to get a magnet in there and a magnet there so we can magnetize these and put whichever one we want. So of course you'll build that and that and then do it up. I don't see why not. Yep, ten of them total. And then our different drone options. Yep, so it looks like we have different antenna options. And then here's our different guns on the hand placement. So with these, if you were to magnetize these, you would put all the guns together and then magnetize the shoulder and then that arm spot on the figures and then on each different gun so that way you would take off that entire gun and then 
pop them all and so forth and so on. And all sorts of different accessories. So here's we're showing all of those different heads. So it looks like there's four different heads in total. Nope, here's some more different heads. It's a six, seven, eight. That is a lot of different heads because the one, remember there was a ton of those. Um, but then there's a, a three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is a lot of different heads. And then here we can see all the different accessories that we can potentially put on them. And again, here we're saying the same same concept would go here, where you would uh, put the gun together, so the magnet would be here on this shoulder and here on that shoulder, and then so they could be uh, popped right on. And they try to make it a little easy because you can see with the blue, none of that has changed, just which weapon you've chosen. Here again, a whole bunch of accessories that you can then put on. Of course, when you put these accessories on, you want to pay attention to where you put these and all of your different gun options because if you notice like here, this one's, you know, held high, you wouldn't want to have this one set up, put, you know, maybe one of these down his, his front or, you know, put some of those on there. And then all of a sudden when you go to put that one on there, something is in the way. Um, or, uh, or here, if you want to put it, say, if you put something on the side, uh, see, because here his hand is kind of up and there's his hand's kind of down. Uh, if you put them maybe a, a something there on the side and all of a sudden it's in the way uh, with one of these others. So you do want to pay attention, um, you know, set all these guys up, magnetize all your guns, uh, and then put them all on. And then what I like to do is I'll just get some blue tack and put a little blue tack on the back of my accessory, put it where I want it to do, and then you can go through and put all the different hands on and make sure that they're not getting in the way of these accessories that you're putting on. And then here's an even more detailed color show. That's very cool looking. So again, absolutely love that. Wish this one was on the back. And the instructions in all the different languages. Now one of the things I did notice right here, if you look on, there is a lot of similarity here um, to these Tau colors and to um, Space Wolves. So if you were looking to maybe get two sets where you want maybe the Tau and say a Space Marine, uh, the, 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 the Space Wolves might be a good one to double up on um, because a lot of these colors you're going to be using on both sides. You know, especially if you get the uh, the Thunder Wolves where you might use, you know, for like tongues and stuff for, for mouth interiors. Uh, where I know this is, you know, I believe for uh, skin, yep. But Thang, Rust Gray, uh, a lot of those are used for the for the Space Wolves. Where really you only maybe need, I think, one or two more extra colors um, for the Space Wolves army. Other than that, I mean, you're doing the same for um, battle damage and leather stuff. The same thing for... Uh, purity seals, all of that, so very cool. And then finally, the crisis battle suits. One of the older instructions, this is not the color like we just looked at. And then here, notice it's saying interchangeable parts, so you'll be able to pick which kind of legs you're doing. Now I'm guessing they're probably only going to give you so many, um, but you got to pick which one you want. Because I think there are three here. Yeah, three. So, so interchangeable to a degree. Yeah, and these are the ones for the flight by the looks of it. And then, of course, the drones. Yep. Yeah. 
Now with these, I know what a lot of people they will do is actually put a magnet on the top of the flight stand and then a magnet here, then of course magnet here. So that way you can change out the bottom weapon on the drones and uh, be able to take the drone on and off of the uh, flight stand. And then of course all of the rules in all the different languages. Well, that is everything for the Tau Empire start collecting set. I hope this unboxing has helped you to determine if this set is something you would be interested in getting for yourself. There's definitely a lot to this. Uh, not only is this a good starter set for your 40K, but if you're also interested in Kill Team, uh, this is a good set to get your Kill Team uh, uh, army going as well. There's a lot of great things in here for that. Well, until next time, guys, I'll see you later.